Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm taking a look at the multi-shot brake barrel Gamo Swarm Roadster Gen 2. But before that, I'm getting to work on the Grey Squirrel feeding station that I set up in the last episode. Right, well if you've seen the previous episode, you will have seen me setting up a grey squirrel feeding station just to show exactly the process that I go through to get them established. Now, that particular feeding station is now getting a lot of attention from squirrels, which are causing a lot of damage in these particular woods. So I thought it'd be a good idea to shoot there today. Um, I have made one or two changes to the setup since we first established it, but I'll talk more about those once we're in the hide. So just very briefly to go through the kit that I'm going to be using today. The gun is my FX Impact Mark II and I've opted to use the sub 12 foot pound version in 177 calibre. Now I shot here a few days ago and the squirrels were actually a lot more skittish than I'd expected them to be. Certainly not as confident around the feeder as squirrels usually are. So I've decided just to keep things a little bit quieter by going sub 12. It's got much quieter muzzle report and it shouldn't make much difference in terms of uh, delivering clean kills because I'm gonna be shooting over relatively close ranges anyway. Um, and the impact, obviously it's a really accurate air gun but it's also great in the hide because it's just so compact. I have paired the impact today with the Zeiss Conquest V4 scope. Now, um, it is quite an expensive scope, it's certainly not a cheap scope, but if you want to invest in a real quality optic for a high quality air gun like the Impact, the, the glass in these scopes is excellent. They've got amazing light gathering and their general optical quality is fantastic. I've been using this one for about a year and I am really impressed with it. That scope is held on as ever with sports match scope mounts, which I've got absolute faith in. So that's the, the main kit. Um, let's get into the hide, hopefully shoot a few of these bike stripping squirrels. Well, that's two taken with nice clean headshots. Now, you may well have noticed that I haven't been waiting for these squirrels to go down to the feed tray and take a peanut and settle with it, which I normally would do, but the squirrels here, as I mentioned earlier, are, are surprisingly jumpy. Um, and those two certainly seemed a bit uneasy and possibly aware that we were here. So I've just wanted to take the shots before they spook. Now I think a possible reason for that is there have been quite a lot of tree felling works in these woods and it's made this area a lot more open and I think that's making the squirrels feel significantly more vulnerable. Um, maybe not just to shooting but also to birds of prey.
Well, that one was stone dead on top of the feeder. And I thought for a moment that it was going to stay there, but it did eventually twitch off. bit of a dangler there. Now I mention very frequently that, that does often happen with headshot squirrels but they are effectively stone dead as soon as that pellet hits them in the head. It just so happens that occasionally there's a nervous reaction that makes them clench up and they may just manage to get a hold of the feeder or a branch and that's why they dangle. Now that shot was also a bit of a shock for the woodpecker that was on the feeder at the same time as the squirrel. Um, I mentioned that I'd made a few changes since I originally set up the feeding stations and hide here. Now the main one being that I've put a second feeder up on the same spot just because once the, this, this feeding station was getting a lot of attention from squirrels the feed was going down ever so quickly so getting that extra capacity of another feeder just saved me from having to travel back and forth quite so frequently to keep them filled up. And also, I've put another net at the back of the hide, um, just because I realised the way I need to sit here, I was being slightly skylined. I'm not quite as much against the tree as I expected to be. Now I've doubled the net up, and I'm still a little bit silhouetted, so I may even have to do a little bit more there. I thought we were going to have one stuck in the feed tray there. Um, now that one did actually settle with its back to me, but I could see plenty of its skull, certainly enough to deliver a nice headshot, and it was very cleanly killed. Now, you've probably noticed that the last couple of squirrels have actually had the confidence to drop down and take peanuts and settle with them. And I think that could well be because it's just getting a little bit later in the day and maybe that's making them feel a little bit more confident. Um, I wish that we could stay until dark, but we're heading off to the farm for some ratting now and we want to get there to set up before it gets dark. But um, I think we've proven that this feeding station is 
up and running and doing what it was intended to do and I'm sure that there are still some productive sessions to be had here yet. That feeding station is really starting to produce the goods. Next up, I'm taking a look at the multi-shot brake barrel Gamo Swarm Roadster Gen 2. Simplicity is one of the greatest attractions of air gun shooting and you can't get much simpler than a brake barrel air gun with a self-contained power plant. Now opting for a brake barrel usually means sacrificing magazine loading but not with this one. What I've got here is the Gamo Swarm Roadster Gen 2 which combines a self-contained power plant with multi-shot magazine loading. This air gun retails for £269 and that includes this 3 to 9 by 40 scope and one piece mount. Now it's lovely and light, tipping the scales at just over 2.6 kilos before you fit the scope. The Swarm Roadster is really comfortable to shoot and a lot of that is down to the design of the synthetic stock. Now starting at the front, it's got a nice long forend and there are patches of really grippy stippling on both sides. Now the same stippling is also present on the pistol grip, which is nice and steep and has a large thumb hole cut away behind it. Although the stock is ambidextrous, its thoughtful design means it doesn't feel like a compromise in any way. The cheek piece is plenty high enough for good eye alignment with the supplied scope and mounts, and there's a really squashy rubber butt pad to soak up what little recoil this gun creates. And you can even push the blocks out of the ventilated section to open up those slots and make it even squashier. The metalwork on the cylinder is neatly finished in black and it's machined with dovetail rails. Now the gun comes supplied with the recoil reducing riser rail seen here, which even incorporates an arrestor section and a hole that accepts a pin in the one piece mount so you really shouldn't experience any problems with scope creep with this setup. The barrel sits inside a full length shroud which incorporates a pretty big silencer. Now, it can be difficult to tell just how effective silencers are on brake barrel spring powered air guns because your head is so close to the moving parts, but I could genuinely tell that this one makes a noticeable difference to sound suppression. The shroud and silencer also provide a really good grip when cocking the gun and I have to say that I was just blown away by just how easy this gamo is to cock. It's a really smooth stroke that requires very little effort. Snap the barrel closed and the lockup also feels really secure. Of course the really clever thing about this gamo is its 10 shot magazine which on this model sits horizontally so it doesn't hinder the sight picture. Now, when you break the barrel to cock the action, the magazine is indexed and a pellet is fed into the breech ready for your next shot. There are 177 and 22 caliber options. This one is a 22. Now that magazine is an absolute doddle to use and it's worked flawlessly during the two weeks that I've been using it. Now the result is fast and reliable follow-up shots when targeting pests and rapid fire fun on the plinking range. To reload the magazine, you push the front clips forwards and it pops out. You then drop pellets in nose first from the top, rotating the drum for each one. When it's full, you put the magazine back in, base first and push it down to snap it into position. It is even numbered so you can keep an eye on how many pellets you have left as you rattle through the shots. Shot release is also exceptionally good thanks to the CAT custom action trigger. Now the blade design is perfectly good 
plus the mechanism is two stage and it's adjustable in both the first and second stages. Straight out of the box, it was actually set up pretty well. The first stage was fairly light, but it comes to a clear stop before a really crisp and predictable second stage brake. There's a manual safety catch positioned just in front of the trigger. Now it's a bit close to the blade for my liking, but it does what it needs to do and it's certainly easy to access. It's safe when it's in the rearward position and you simply flick it forwards when you're ready to take the shot. I have to say that I initially thought this gun was down on power because it was just so easy to cock and its firing cycle is very smooth and with minimal recoil, but I ran it over a chronograph and it's churning out a pretty consistent 10 and a half foot pounds. So that smooth firing cycle is just the result of a really efficient power plant. This gamo is powerful enough to tackle pests at close to mid range. Of course, that takes accuracy too, and it also has that. Do your bit and it's capable of consistent half inch groups at 25 meters, which I think is great for a pretty affordable recoiling air gun. And it will absolutely demolish spinning and knockdown targets at a far greater range than that. So that's the Gamo Swarm Roadster Gen 2. It's a lovely little air gun that's really shootable and also very competitively priced. Easy to cock and smooth to shoot, it punches way above its price point when it comes to performance and that 10 shot magazine is just the icing on the cake. I have had a great time shooting it. I'm afraid that's all we have time for in this week's episode, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. And in the meantime, you can keep up with me on Instagram at Matt Manning Outdoors. Thank you for watching, and as ever, if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through air gun membership. Don't miss the award-winning air gun shooter magazine. It's packed with hunting features, reviews, tactics and insight to help you become an even more successful shooter. Get your copy today in shops or online.